Jeffrey is scared of what other people may think when he gets rejected, and so he never opens himself up to get rejected in the first place. But because of this, he never polarizes women and he stays lonely. Adonis. Adonis doesn't get rejected, and even if he did, he would have zero feelings of embarrassments. You never tell girls that you like them because you're scared of being rejected and you don't want all the people around you to see that because that would feel embarrassing. But today, you're gonna learn how to get over that. My name is Hamza. I help young men go through the Jeffrey to Adonis transformation through self-improvement. Scroll down right now, click on the subscribe and the post notification button to see my next videos. I would never ever make it clear to a girl that I liked her. Through high school and college, I got like intense crushes for girls. Like I really, really like these girls. But I would never even get close to the point of of admitting it, not even, bro, that was like, that was too far. I would never even get close to the point of even just kind of opening that up for the fear that she could essentially say no to me and everyone around me would be like pointing and laughing at me. And so what do you think happened? I had a crush on this girl, I'm so excited to go to school, I've got this lesson with her and I'm, you know, so excited for it, everything in weeks, months. And then I'm scrolling down Facebook and I see that she's got in a relationship with someone else. Bro, the, the pain, bro, the pain. <laughs> I was writing the script and I realized potentially the reason why I personally had feared this rejection, that feared this confrontation is because confrontation and rejection for me often was like followed up by a slap on the cheek by my parents. And so I feel like that potentially like stunted my my ability to sort of polarize and sort of, you know, like acknowledge what I wanted from someone. But then I also realized that love hurts, but you're in pain anyway. Because when you have the fear of rejection, you're essentially protecting yourself from the rejection and you know maybe the social humiliation that can come from that. When you're doing that, you have a 0% chance to get with her. And that would be okay. You know, maybe, you know, you saved yourself from potential hurt, but, even with this 0% chance, you're still hurting. You're still craving this person and, and you're not being with them. You still experience some kind of pain anyway, but with 0% chance of that pain going away. Whereas when you polarize, when you actually show your attention to someone and you risk being rejected, the percentage changes. It can't be 0% anymore. There's gotta be at least a 1% chance that you now get this girl. It's still gonna be painful, but at least there's a chance. And so to overcome this, you have to start seeing embracing rejection as a skill that you need to level up. Like all the pickup artist people, and although I don't really like their stuff, they say this and it's absolutely true with my experience. The first rejection hurts. The fifth rejection, like, stings a little bit. The 10th rejection is funny. And by the 20th, 50th rejection, you're like, you, you kind of want the rejection just because it's a little bit more funny than actually kissing the girl. And so by the time I got to university and I'm actually like learning game, like in the field, I'm not like learning online like a little spurg anymore, but I'm actually going to nightclubs speaking to girls. That's when I embrace rejection. A girl could reject me in like a very horrible, loud way in front of everyone in the club. And I'd literally just burst out laughing knowing that I was one step closer to the girl that I'd be taking home. But I could not have been like this a couple of months ago. You have to start embracing rejection and think of every rejection as like a rep, a rep in the gym. Every rejection is like a bicep curl. And so we have to strengthen up our biceps by literally getting rejected many, many times. I'm telling you right now, there is no guy who's had a lot of success with women who hasn't also been rejected by 10 times as many women. The guy who you know who gets girls gets rejected a lot. Because think about it this way. If you had been rejected 100 times, Visualize that 100 times, you know, by the 50th time, it's like, it's so normal for you. It's like a habit to get rejected 100 times. Do you think the 100th and first time would be as painful as the first? Do you think the 101st time, the 101th, how'd you say that? How'd you say that number? 101th or 101st? 101th. That sounds stupid. 101th. 101st. The 101st reject... For the 101st rejection could not be anywhere near as painful as the first few. So go get rejected 100 times. And you're gonna find that in the pursuit of getting rejected 100 times, you're also gonna succeed a bunch of times too. The reason why most guys are so, so clueless with women and, and sexually and intimacy deprived is because they haven't been rejected 100 times in person. Online doesn't count. And we also need to talk about self-worth because if you're quite a young guy, your self-worth is based on her 
perception and also acceptance of you. And when a woman doesn't accept us, when a woman isn't attracted to us, especially if we like her, it, it truly hurts. Not just like the rejection, but it makes us double check that potentially we aren't acceptable for love. It makes us feel like we're not good enough for it. And there's a certain mindset that really helped me with this. And this was that when you approach, whether it's online or in person, and she does reject you, she's not actually rejecting you as a whole, as a person. It feels like she's saying you have no right to live. It's, it's feel like she's saying like you are, are not worthy. When in fact, what it more is, it's more like she's kind of rejecting the profile that she's seen of you. She's rejecting the 10 seconds, five minutes, 10 hours that she's seen of you and not you with your entire story but of course we feel like she's rejecting our entire story and all the experiences that we went to and our values but she doesn't exactly see that plus she might just need a shit right now she might need like dead ass like she might need like a very sweaty like she might have like a, a bad stomach right now like the reason why you've gotten rejected is because she's currently got diarrhea and she couldn't even like fathom thinking about anything romantic right now. There's a thousand different reasons why you can get rejected but the one that our mind automatically concludes is that we are not worthy, we are not good enough, we don't deserve love. And generally, if your mind seems to conclude something like this, it won't exactly say it in your brain, but it will feel as painful as one of those realizations. It's because your parents didn't exactly do a great job in your childhood. If you have a secure attachment style and your parents did like, you know, they raised you in a very healthy way, you will see a rejection as just that, like just a, just a little bit of a rejection. No, you won't even see it as a rejection. You'll literally just think, yeah, you know what, if you're a healthy person, you actually wouldn't even see a rejection as a rejection. You'd see it as like, yeah, we just weren't really compatible for each other. Now, if you were slapped or shouted at by your parents, you have the anxious attachment style. You're more gonna see it as a symptom of being unworthy of love. And not only does you know, the rejection hurt, but it brings back the same feelings that you got when your parents essentially betrayed their role of your like loving protector. And I've said this before, it can be as simple as your parents shouting at you. That's enough to give a child dead ass. That's 100% enough to give a child anxiety for life. Anything to do with our adult dating lives, sexual lives especially, is so heavily influenced by our childhood. I know that a lot of people disagree with this and they believe like, no, we've got full control. I don't think so because we are shaped in our childhood now we can break out of that shape now i've done that like you know to a good level but you've got to think of how much effort it truly takes to like change yourself as a person the majority of people have not put that effort in which means that the majority of people will end up exactly where they were destined to be after their childhood experiences now you might be on self-improvement you've done some weightlifting and stuff fantastic but have you done introspective work on on love and inner child work. Because most people have now, to be honest, like I barely have, I've only just started this stuff recently and it's quite like a little bit traumatic to even kind of like talk about it and to think about it. If you feel like you've got a big fear of rejection, I can guarantee you that it's because of how your parents behave to you. Because getting rejected by a girl today reminds you of get you getting rejected in a very hostile, violent way by your parents. And that's why it feels so painful. That's why it makes you feel so anxious, some depressing shit, innit? I wish I had more to kind of say to you right now, but I'm in the beginning stages of really like finding myself <laughs> in, in like the inner child type of love work and stuff. So I can't really recommend too much because I'm a complete beginner in this as myself. I'd say journaling would help, but right now, at least for me as well, knowledge is more important because the journaling doesn't come to huge realizations unless you've got the education in the first place. So if what I'm saying to you resonates, the book that I haven't read much of, so I can't fully recommend it, but I, I can say it to you in the sense that I'm currently reading the book. And the book is How to Do the Work by Dr. Nicole LaPera. It's a book that I'm currently reading and it, it seems like it's gonna be the one that's gonna answer a lot of questions. So I'm currently reading it and maybe if you start reading it, we can pretend that we're reading it together. That's cute. I won't reject you, bro. You're always welcome in my cult. Do the hard work, especially when you don't feel like it.